As Manchester City won the treble, it's important to focus on how this club was built. On the right is Sheikh Mansour, the owner of Manchester City, greeting Turkish authoritarian Erdogan at the Champions League final. Mansour, the vice president of the UAE, was appointed by his brother, Sheikh Mohammed, who was the UAE's president. Man City was available for us, and Man City has a special... Uh... Uh, a special thing to the Manchester people. In 2008, Abu Dhabi investors agreed to buy City. Per Forbes, the Sheikh spent $212 million to take over the club. Thank you again for your support. From this man, former Thailand Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra, who came with a questionable history stemming from corruption charges he would be found guilty of in 2008. The conviction was the first against him since he was ousted by a military coup in 2006, despite a raft of other corruption charges against him. That's via The Guardian. I need y'all to understand how porous this side was, okay? Between 96 and 03, City were a club stumbling between divisions, with a series of rebel and promotions defining the period. When Shinawatra took over, it was a time of optimism. Then it soured quickly. Sheikh Mansour not only bought the club, but took on the debt that was accumulated. Today, this club is worth an estimated $5 billion, growing under Mansour's ownership. There has been no shortage of spending, as Mansour's net worth is roughly $17 billion. Furthermore, his family's total wealth is estimated to be in the vicinity of $1 trillion. And let me tell you, the results have been jarring, to say the least. Manchester City have won the Premier League in five of the last six years, including winning and coming runners-up in two of the last three Champions Leagues. Manchester City are Premier League champions, but questions remain about how the club does business. In 2013, a new group was created and it was called City Football Group. They write on their website, CFG is the owner of football related businesses in major cities around the world, including football clubs, academies, technical support and marketing companies. Via DW, Sheikh Mansour of the ruling family in Abu Dhabi owned the Abu Dhabi United Group or ADUG, which took over City in 08. It handed control over to CFG in 2014. Now, at the time of the takeover, there was more to it than just football. Academics at the University of Sheffield put out a report accusing the Manchester City Council of selling huge tracts of public land at a discount price to the Abu Dhabi Investment Fund, the same fund that owns Manchester City. The Sheffield researchers would go on to say the council sold the family silver too cheap in what they describe as a sweetheart deal that represents a transfer of public wealth to private hands that is difficult to justify as prudent and is tantamount to offshoring local democracy. Most notably, it points out that the Ventures Management Company paid only £4,000 in corporate tax in 2021 on rental income of £10.1 million. But hey... Look over here, City fans. Your team has won the Champions League. And it's not just City where Abu Dhabi is showing its influence. Locally here in Chicago, former Mayor Richard Daly made a deal. In 2008, it sold roughly 36,000 parking meters on a 75-year lease for over $1 billion. The buyers were led by Morgan Stanley. However, the state-owned investment arm of Abu Dhabi ended up owning a large share in Chicago's parking meter system. Now, here's the thing. It's not just city, and it's not just Chicago. There is more. A toll highway in Indiana, the Chicago Skyway, a stretch of highway in Florida, parking meters in Nashville, Pittsburgh, L.A., and other cities, a port in Virginia, and a whole bevy of Californian public infrastructure projects, and that is just to name a few. During the Sheikh's reign, China President Xi Jinping and England Prime Minister David Cameron toured the facilities, proving this is more than a club. It is a business of geopolitical influence. That meeting was in October of 2015. 
Not even two months later, the UAE and China launched a joint investment fund with a value of $10 billion. Remember that video of Turkish President Erdogan and Sheikh Mansour? The UAE and Turkey reached a deal just a short time ago, signing an agreement which aims to increase trade between the two countries to $40 billion in the next five years. That's per Reuters. By the way, the head of the Abu Dhabi Sovereign Wealth Fund, Al Mubarak, gave she and Cameron the tour of Manchester City. He also serves as the club's chair. Sovereign Wealth Funds, or SWFs, are huge in the Middle East. Most of the bigger oil-producing states have massive SWFs that act as cash repositories for the revenues generated by, for instance, state-owned oil companies. Most SWFs have a mission to invest aggressively and generate huge long-term returns. Imagine the biggest and most aggressive hedge fund on Wall Street, then imagine that that same fund is 50 or 60 times bigger and outside the reach of the SEC or any major regulatory authority, and you've got a pretty good idea of what an SWF is. With all of these funds coming in, Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp was asked about it and pretty much told it like it is. When you signed your contract, your contract in April, that your new city would, would not stop developing. That's obvious. Yeah. So what do Liverpool need to do to keep to keep pace? Oh you don't like you don't like the answer. You will not like the answer about that. And you all have the answer already. So nobody can compete with City in that. You have the best team in the world and you put in the best striker on the market. No no matter what it costs. No matter what it costs, you just do it. I know, in City they will not like it, nobody will like it, you ask a question, but you know the answer. But, but what does Liverpool mean? We cannot act like them. It's not possible. Not possible. Is that not hard to... It's just, it's just clear, and again you know the answer. There, there are three clubs in world football who can do what they want. And he's right. Now we must say, the ADUG says it's privately owned, and there is no correlation between club and Abu Dhabi's government. DW, however, reports of internal documents saying, well, otherwise. Matt Ford would write, The purpose of this has been threefold. To diversify its oil-dependent economy, bolster its geopolitical standing in a volatile region surrounded by powerful neighbors, and associate it in the global consciousness with glamour and success rather than being an autocratic monarchy presiding over well-documented human rights abuses. This phenomenon is often referred to as sports washing. Manchester City is the soft power strategy of the ruling family, says Christopher David a professor of Middle East politics at Durham University. He sees the Sheik's investment in Manchester City as the product of political calculation. The ruling family, he believes, views English football as a vehicle for marketing Abu Dhabi and improving relations between the Emirate and the West. The club would accept sponsorship money from Arab Tech, a controversial construction company with an atrocious human rights record. In all, the club has faced over 100 charges of breaching the Premier League's financial fair play rules, which were put in place to quote-unquote level the playing field, but have done anything but. Former City CEO Gary Cook agrees, saying he believes Abu Dhabi was looking for a proxy brand. The club was bought, tying into the concept of sports washing.